All right, I'll check the comments over here. It's Sunday night, uh, April. What is the date today, guys? The 23rd? Sound right? April 23rd. As you join us tonight, I would love to see your comments. Um, love to hear comments. Sunday night prep work. Freddie Blanton, 23rd. Ryan Hall, thank you for that. Casey Peterson, I see you out there doing big things. Casey, somehow I never get invited to some of these cool places that you're going. So can you, can you invite me to one of those things? Okay. And I'm thinking about Casey doing doing another thing called Retreat to Attack with Coach Burt. And I'm going to do it. I'm going to do one at my house in Florida. And I'm going to do one at the Lodge. We just, we just released it tonight. It's a concept called Retreat to Attack. It's where you just go into the woods for two days. Spend two days with me. It's going to be five people either at my lodge are going to stay physically at the lodge or they're going to stay. We're going to rent a big, nice, multi-million dollar house down in Florida. Casey was part of something. We kind of did something similar to that where we had a, a small number of people and it was really, really cool. And I originally called that the Power Five, but man, I just, I, this, this concept, this concept of retreat to attack just keeps coming back to me. And when a concept keeps coming back to me, I think there's times in life you retreat. You take a break, you rejuvenate, and you go and you get away and you, you go into the woods and you do the you do the deep work, what Cal Newport called the deep work. And uh, and I think so the concept is I've, I've done one of these. Five people at the lodge, you stay at the lodge, you lock down for two days, and it's nothing but strategy on your future. Because there's typically some missing structure that's keeping you from getting from A to B. And what happens is you get caught up in this vicious trap. You know, as Elvis saying, you're caught in a trap and you can't walk out. And you just stay right there over and over and over. So my solution to that, Rick True, because what I do is I sit back and I study the market and I create solutions to problems. At the end of the day, that's really what I do. I create products and services that solve problems for business, for business people. And so uh, my solution to that is to go put on the, the calendar certain dates where I log down with five people, okay? And it's at the lodge. You stay there for two days or you go in Florida. We rent a big, nice house in Florida. And then I come to that house and, and, and we'll log down with you, man, for two days. And we just do strategy. We just get down in the weeds. Um, we just get down in the weeds, man, and just, and just go to work. The first group I did this with said it was the best thing they've ever come to with me, ever. And they've come to a lot of things. So if you see me promote that, retreat to attack. It's going to be two days with me either at the lodge where you physically stay there. You have your breakfast and lunch there. We'll let you get out and go have dinner on your own. I come in and have breakfast with you and spend time with you. And then we map it out. Or we're going to do it in Florida at a certain time of year and uh, you know where we rent a big, nice house for you. And everybody stays there. And we just lock down because it's amazing how everybody has the same problems. Everybody is somewhere and they're trying to get somewhere else. Everybody's at A and they're trying to get to B. And so what we're going to do is we're going to work on that. Now tonight, uh, tonight I'm going to talk about this concept of separators. Uh, and separators, the big, the big, big time people are looking for something that would give them a competitive advantage. Okay, and, and in today's world, it's actually not hard, no matter what you do for a living, to separate yourself from other people, okay? Now, if you look at what really separates uh, high money earners versus people that are not high money earners, a lot of it has to do with basic things. They work harder, they show up more, they make and keep their commitments, they create more value, they follow up, uh, which is what I'm teaching on Tuesday to some of the top real estate agents in the country, and then Friday I'm speaking to a bank card, uh, and, and then headed down to Florida for a couple's retreat. You know, at the end of the day, you really know what what is separating the top performers from the middle performers from the bottom performers. It's just, you know, and when you step back and look at it, you could look at the habits of the top 1%, which is remarkable boldness. I was just watching a documentary. I got fascinated with this documentary today about Shania Twain. And at the end of the day, Shania Twain was just, she's just tougher. I mean, she sold 100 million albums and at the end of the day, she's just she was just tougher, man, than other people. When she came to Nashville, she just and as her 
her manager said, or one of her managers said, man, you could knock her down with a sledgehammer and that woman would get back up. And so when you think about separators, could it be that separators are remarkable boldness that is more than confidence. See, if I write person of interest again, I may go back and do person of interest 2.0 because I wrote that book eight to 10 years ago. And what and if I had to put the ingredients of people of interest today, I would put the habits of the top 1% of performers. I would move from confidence to remarkable boldness. I would move from great connectivity to incredible connection and, and inclusion skills or building community skills. Uh, I would move to... Uh, Caitlin, I would move to uh, intrinsic motivation, which would be the big because goals. There's there's steam in the engine. Why big people do things that other people just won't do. Um, you know, I would look at uh, grit and resilience, and I would look at that, which is prey drive, in essence. And I would look at uh, ability to lock in and see something through to its conclusion. And the reason I constantly reference those five habits of the top one percent is that really is what separates the top tier people from the, me the, the medium people and even the lowest level people. So when you're thinking about it, uh, you gotta ask yourself, which of those ingredients are you missing? Are you missing remarkable boldness, which is striking fearlessness? Are you missing intrinsic motivation? So everything's gotta be extrinsic. Are you missing uh, ability to connect with other people? because uh, you like vulnerability or you just don't have good connection skills or you don't know how to enroll people into a vision? Are you missing um, grit and resilience, meaning 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 you can't get back up, you stay down for long periods of time, or are you missing uh, uh, ability to lock in and see something through to its conclusion? What I noticed many times when I when I'm looking at people as separate is that some people dabble with their potential and some people decide. Some people, m most people, not some, are very casual. They're casual in how they learn. They're casual in how they show up. They're casual in how they take responsibility. And then when other people pass those people over, they typically complain about it and place it in other people's hands. You know, if you study the work of Dweck or books on peak performance, you know, she talks about these, these, this one real ingredient of top performers versus low performers is their ability to, to, to be open. They have growth mindsets. They're humble. They're hungry. They're teachable. They're looking for an edge. They operate more from a vitamin versus a painkiller, you know, because there's two types of businesses. They operate more because, like, man, I'm looking for an edge. What can give me an edge? What can give me an advantage? What can give me, what can get me to my big goals? And so what are some habits that I look at? Number one, did you sit down today and did you map out your week? Did you have it done by 730 tonight? Did, did, you, did, you, did you have everything done to map out your week for this week? Do you have an accountability person that you turn it into? What happens if you don't turn it in? See, over a period of time, what happens when you don't do things you're supposed to do, you actually just lose the support of people of interest. The worst thing you can lose from a person of interest is their support because they take that support and they give it to somebody else. And that somebody else is typically the people that win. So it could be a situation where you're getting leads from somebody, but you're not performing with those leads. And because you're not performing with those leads, they give the leads to somebody else. Could be that you've got a lot of momentum right now and, 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 and you lose that momentum because people lose faith in you because you don't do these separators. You don't show up. You don't grow up. You whine a lot. You complain a lot. You make excuses a lot. You just don't buckle down and find a way to, to win, man. And in any economy, that's what really the top performers do. So if you're looking at separators, uh, I go back to when I was 19 years old. How did I go from 19 as an assistant coach to the head coach at 22? And the other assistants didn't. Love them. They were all good people, but they didn't have the work ethic I had. That I showed up early and I stayed late. Number one, always. Never had to ask me to show up. Never had to ask me to show up on time. I showed up early. I stayed late. I did the dirty jobs, as Mike Rowe would say. Scrubbed the floor. Uh, did anything other people didn't want to do, right? Number three, I served a vision that was not my vision. I learned to serve other people's visions. I learned to serve at the pleasure of another person, which is a lost art in today's society, okay? Everybody thinks they can be a star when they clearly don't have skills to be a star. Everybody thinks they can do things that people that make multi, uh, millions and millions of dollars do when they clearly can't, and if they could, they'd be doing it. So I learned to serve the vision uh, of another person while I was in this apprenticeship studying and learning. So I showed up early, I stayed late. It's always the last one to leave. 
Never left before my boss left. Never. I would always ask his permission at the end of the day, sir, do I have your permission to leave or would you like me to stay? Sometimes he said, I want you to stay. And I stayed, okay? Uh, always when he asked me to go one mile, I went two. Always anticipated the needs that he and the program had. And always, always, always over-delivered, okay? Now, if you're looking for ways to separate you from 98% of the bozos in the world that can't figure out why they can't get ahead, if you just got back to doing the basic things, show up early, stay late, always give more than what you're asked, learn to serve the, uh, at the pleasure of other people, learn to deliver over and over and over again. We don't whine, we don't complain, we don't make excuses. Don't need a professional babysitting service to babysit you. What time you're supposed to show up, what you're supposed to do every week. You know these things, okay? But, but, but if you're asking what really separates people. Then you're going to get to levels. What separates a person that makes 50,000 versus a person that makes 250? What separates 250 versus 500? What separates 500 versus a million? What separates a person making a million versus two and a half million or five million? Or, or, or what's the difference between a net worth of 10 million and 50 million? They're separators, okay? And so if you don't have these basic things, whether it be the habits of the top 1%, the ingredients of people of interest, the work ethic that it takes to really win, uh, I encourage you watch the watch the episode on Shania Twain, um, you know, and just watch how she bounced back. Watch how uh, watch how she stays focused. Watch um, basically what I want you to do is just go out there and watch and get in a room with top performers. Okay, if I ask you right now, what is your B? What's your big goals? Who's coaching you toward those goals? What level of accountability do you currently have? What happens if you don't show up like you're supposed to? Because where there's no consequence, there's no change of behavior. Okay, so separators are simple. Separators many times are simple. And I look at this one, follow up. I watch how people follow up. Do you give up or do you follow up? See, they asked me on Tuesday to speak to these top, like top 30 or 50 real estate agents in Nashville. It's Tom Ferry, me. A lot of great people. Uh, Matt Wagner's putting that event on, and they wanted me to teach on follow-up. Follow-up is about conviction. Follow-up is about persistence. Follow-up is about inconvenience to you. Follow-up is about striking when the iron's hot. Like I sent a message to a, to a real estate agent earlier today. He said, I want to look at this property. He said, yeah, I'll send you some information later today. Okay. Well, what if I ain't interested later today? Well, if I was interested when I, when I actually inquired about the property. See, we live in such a laissez-faire society that everybody just kind of gets around to things on their timetable. And I'm telling you, leads are too valuable to mess with today. They're too valuable for you to be casual with. You can't, you can't complain about not making the money you want to make and simultaneously not call a lead back fast, not follow up seven to 15 touches, not, not get in there and get interested. So what I look at as separators is a lot of people can show up for a day. A lot of people can show up for a week. A lot of people can show up for maybe 90 days. A lot of people can't. I look at can a person show up for a, for an extended period of time over and over and over and over and over. Can they keep delivering over and over and over and over? These are things that separate. Okay, these are things that separate. Rob Stein, you know, he was involved in, in the band. I guarantee you, when you're a band coach, Rob, some kids showed up early, stayed late. Went the extra mile, had a great attitude, humble, hungry, coachable, sought out mentorship. These are the people that separate. Okay? And um, this is what we're looking for here. Okay? So, Coach Burt, I'll take any questions that you have tonight. It's 837. I'm going to be in Nashville, Tennessee on Tuesday, speaking to top real estate agents. I'm going to be in... Uh, what am I doing this week? I'm doing a thing on recruiting on Wednesday. I'm doing a, a speaking engagement on Friday. I'm doing a couples retreat uh, on the weekend this weekend down in Watercolor, Florida. It's supposed to be beautiful. I've got me and Andy Elliott coming up uh, the 12th and 13th of May at the Lodge. Nothing but sales. I've got uh, a course called A Confident Mind. Man, I would put everybody in that. My, my kids, my cousins, my, all my team members, anybody that's in the sewer cycle with their thoughts, Anybody that struggles with anxiety, fear, worry, anybody that places their destiny in other people's hands, I would put everybody in a confident mind. It's 97 bucks. Uh, we should have 500 to 1,000 people in that program. No questions asked. And then I'm going to be rolling out uh, an Activate event 
Uh, it's going to be completely free virtually on May the 10th to activate and reactivate the prey drive. If the people that come in the room are going to pay to be in the room with me. I'll only take a 20. But uh, if you're serious about playing at a higher level, then, man, let's go. Let's get there, okay? Any questions for old coach tonight, Tim? Good to see you. I'll be seeing you at, at Andy Elliott coming up. I'm just looking at uh, questions. Penny May, Ron Kirby, what's up, brother? Rob Stein, I see you. Brittany Hall, everybody needs a higher level of accountability. Everybody. And just remember this, where there's no consequence, there's no change of behavior. Right, Eric Richard? Where there's no consequence, there's no there's no change of behavior, man. Okay? Can you highlight one more time the list of separators? Absolutely. You know, I, I think there's like common separators. Show up early, stay late. When a person asks you to go one mile, go two. Have an incredible attitude, which is a posture of the body represented by physical state. Okay, always anticipate the needs. Learn to serve a vision of another person. Get great at enrolling people into something and including people's talents. Waste very little time on people who don't show up, man. Okay? Um, now, if you look at the habits of the top 1%, let's look at remarkable boldness, which I should write a book on at some point. I really should write a book on the habits of the top 1% because I talk about it a lot. It's actually a chapter in the book of Flip the Switch, my new book. Uh, remarkable boldness, intrinsic motivation, Connection and community, grit and resilience, ability to lock in, see something through to its conclusion. Okay, now think about that. How many people struggle with that? What's up, Heather Gap? So many, you could pick one of those habits right there and say, man, I see this every freaking day. Okay, that's like this inability to see, to, to see something through to its logical conclusion. That means to see it all the way through to 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 finished. There's no open file there. It's like you take something, man, you just stay with it. You just keep coming. You just keep coming. You just keep coming. Long obedience in the same direction. Okay? All of this really is in my new book, Flip the Switch. I'm, I'm currently contemplating the next book I want to write. I'm playing around with stuff on packaging, um, you know, purpose. Where do I find a link for a confident mind? I'm going to post it in here for you right now. Thanks for thanks for asking. Let me get a confident mind in here. And remember, if you're just coming on tonight, uh, you heard me talk about retreat to attack. That's where I take five people. They stay at the lodge. It's going to be incredible. Or we go to Florida. I may even add a private jet trip on there somewhere. Where you fly down with me private. Okay. There you go. Confident Mind four-week series. Should be in there. Okay. So I just posted that. Okay. Any other questions tonight? Love taking questions. Love interacting with folks. Love people who show up that are hungry, humble, and teachable. Love. You get bonus points if, you, if you're already prepared for the week, man. You would never see me come into a week and not think about that week. I spent all day Sunday. I was coaching... Uh, somebody today, and I, I, I spent all day Sunday, man, preparing for the week. Thinking, creativity, listening to multiple podcasts, thinking and meditating on what I'm going to talk about, creating content, sharpening my saw. Never, ever, ever would you see me come into Monday without a plan. Ever. Okay? That's amateur hour, folks. That's bozo hour. It's amateur hour. You don't win championships. You don't have a championship mindset if you, if you roll into Monday. And if you don't like what you do and you can't show up ready to go, you need to quit and go do something else. Don't take money from a company. Don't steal money from a company because you can't show up like you're supposed to. If you can't do it, do, do the ethical thing and walk in and say, man, I quit. I'm going to go somewhere where I can show up every day like an adult. Too many adults need babysitting. Okay? How do you navigate that with family? Great question. I spend a lot of time with my family on the weekends. So I pretty much take most of Saturday off um, and spend time with the family. Sunday, I uh, spend a lot of time with the family. From from 11.30 to 2.30, we have a, a babysitter that comes to our house on Sundays. Our, our son is typically asleep during that period. And the little one, she mainly watches the little one, uh, Emmy. And, uh, and during that period, me and my wife can do, do whatever we want to during that period. And that gives us a, just a little bit of time to do what we want. So during that period today, I, I uh, listened to a book, went for a long bike ride, uh, took my car and got it clean, the Maybach, 
That thing's sweet, by the way. Uh, but the whole time I'm listening to something. Drove all the way up to to, to uh, Woodbury, Tennessee this morning. Got got my uh, kids from my mom, who was keeping them over the weekend. Listened to a book the whole way there and the whole way back. Listened to a sermon there and on the way back. So what I do is there's just not a lot of time. I don't watch a lot of TV when I do. I watched uh, a documentary today. When I wind down tonight, I'll probably watch another documentary. Right now, everybody in my old house is in the bed. So uh, once I get everybody in the bed... I come back and I do a little bit more winding down. I do this value add right here, so that's how I do it. Okay. Any other questions tonight? Tiffany Gerard. Okay. Heather Gap, Rob Stein, thank you for that. He's right, by the way. If you haven't ordered the book, flip the switch. Come on, folks. What rock are you what rock have you been under if you hadn't ordered my new book? It took me two years to write that book. It was edited twice. Um, it is by far my best book, and it teaches you a very valuable thing: how to activate your how to activate your drive every day. So, if you struggle with inconsistency, you're trying to lead a sales force. That book is for you. Okay. Now, last thing I'm going to tell you tonight: big time people spend a lot of time with uh, other people. Tomorrow night, I'm going to see Rob Luna, who's on Fox Business every week. He and I are doing some deals. I'm working to help him with something. He's working with me with something. Uh, I'm doing. Uh, you know, I mean, man, it's just, it's just, I'm not on the sidelines, man. I don't want you to be on the sidelines. I want you to get in the game, present an idea, follow up on an idea, and keep following up until you have an idea they like. They may not like your first ideas. Here's what a lot of people do to me. They present an idea to me, and either I can't do it, it's not simple, it's not invaluable, it's not a line, it's not a priority. Then I never hear from them again. So if you only got one idea, and a person doesn't like your idea, step back and, and keep going until you find an idea that solves a problem for them. And always go where you feel celebrated, not tolerated. Once I, I say, man, I'd love to work with you, you know, but if you don't want to work with me, then, then it's okay, man. I'm just going to move on to somebody who does. I don't get my feelings hurt. I say, thank you. I owe you. I use that and I move on to somebody else. With 8 billion people, you're only looking for people that are looking for you. But if, but if you're constantly getting the short end of the stick... If you're constantly thinking life's out to get you, maybe, just maybe, you are the problem. You're not separating yourself. Okay? You're not putting the work in. You're not following up like you should. You're not having a tough enough attitude. You don't have the grit and resilience you need. You're not winning at a high level. So, and people are watching that. They're watching how you show up. I'm like, man, that dude don't show up. He don't show up. And when he don't show up so many times, okay? Like I said, the worst thing you can lose from a person of influence is their influence. They just take that influence and they give it to somebody else. And those people win. So, we've got a lot going on tonight. Okay? Yeah, that's right. Ryan Mudd, I think I'm going to go into the studio just so you guys know and actually do uh, my own recording. And I'm going to call it Prey Drive. Instinct to Pursue. I've already got a studio. Bernard Porter's already got me a, a world-class studio. I may do a Q&A where people ask me questions and I break it down. And I expand on the book, but I am going to take the new book, Flip the Switch, and probably come out with an audible version uh, just on Prey Drive, Instinct to Pursue. Okay? That's right, Ryan Chichelli. Ryan Chichelli came into town last, last week. That guy keeps showing up, man, keeps following up. Look at what's happening in his career, too, guys. See, this is what's interesting to me. The people I work with and coach, they go, the people who hang with me go out there and get ridiculous results, freakish levels of results. They don't come around every now and then. They don't They don't show up sporadically. They're not casual. They lock in and they see it through. The next thing you know, they're making millions of dollars. It's like, how's, how's that happening? Well, they keep showing up. They don't dabble. They decide. They get in a room. Okay? They get introduced to new people. And then they follow up on those people, just like we teach. Okay? So, you know, if you're wondering why it's not working right for you, then there's something you're doing that's not working. People say all the time, well, it don't work. Well, is, is it not work or is it because you're not working it? It's typically, you're not working it, okay? All right, let's see. There you go, Lisa Galloway. You've been a great student, too. So, love you guys. Hope you have a great week, okay? Everybody needs a coach. One of my books many years ago that I wrote. I actually wrote that book when I was 25 years old. It's called Changing Lives Through Coaching. I came back many years later and said, man, this is what I believe at my core. I believe everybody needs a coach in their life who will actually push them a little bit from time to time okay so have a good night 
Look to see you soon. Get in that Confident Mind series. Reach out to me. I'll put you in touch with one of our coaches if you're interested in doing something with me, speaking at something. Uh, we get speaking requests every single week all over the world from Dubai to Berlin to um, Nashville to Canton, Ohio last week. Man, I want to do I, I'm I'm open for business. I'm hungry. I'm humble. I'm teachable. I am open to do business all over the world. Okay, Heather Gap, we did move, they did move that Denver event to October. They needed some more time to sell tickets, so they're going to be re-releasing that date. So I'll be coming to Denver in October versus May. Okay? All right, you guys have a great night. God bless you.